Hey guys, it's Denise here, Nola Collectibles, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to do a thrift store haul. It's been such a long time since I did a good thrift store haul, and uh, you all know that your girl loves to hit the thrift stores over here. They're pretty fabulous, and share all of my finds and treasures with you. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise, Nola Collectibles. I am a part-time reseller. I sell primarily on eBay, where my store name there is also Nola Collectibles, and I am a full-time jewelry enthusiast. So without further ado, because we came for the jewelry, let's get right into it. I'm trying to figure out what to go to first. I always like to start with a showstopper, so to speak. Um, for today, I went this morning to my thrift store. Every color was on sale except for red. And for me, that's always the benefit of going on the weekend is that they put most of the colors on sale. So they're either 50% off or 75% off. So it is always good. You just have to battle with some of the folks because a lot of people turn out on the weekend, um, but it always ends up being worth it for me. So the first piece that I did want to share with you is I picked up this beautiful rhinestone bracelet and this one was half price of $12.99 and uh, this one caught my eye. It is unmarked, but I just love the fancy rhinestones that we have here. These like duo colored kind of rhinestones and then uh, they are surrounded by ruby red and beautiful pink rhinestones here. I just think this one was absolutely spectacular and I need to do a little bit of research on it because I feel like it could definitely be maybe like a Juliana piece or something similar. So I definitely need to do my diligence and look that one up, but that was just, uh, it just really caught my eye. I feel like that's not something that we see too much of these days, um, you know, fabulous rhinestone pieces like this when they're all intact and all of the rhinestones are there. And uh, of course, with a fancy kind of rhinestone detail there as well. So definitely picked up that guy. Wasn't going to leave that little beauty behind at the thrift store. No siree. So I picked up that one. I love that one so much. It's very pretty and I think perfect for spring. I love the pink and the red. It's very feminine very kind of, like I said, very floral and springy. And so let's stay with rhinestones because I did have, I, I do have good luck in my thrift store where I do find a lot of vintage high quality rhinestone pieces pretty regularly. So I'm always grateful for that. So this dude was $4 and this one is just a really beautiful kind of, I don't know what we'd call this, a floral spray. And we have lovely marquee, uh, uh, emerald colored rhinestones here. We have these lighter color kind of peridot, which maybe possibly could be uranium rhinestones, uranium glass. I'll have to check that under a black light to see if it fluoresces. Uh, I know a lot of folks are kind of like, what's up with the fluorescing? Like people are kind of obsessed with it, but everyone has their something like, you know, it's a good time that maybe if you have some of these vintage pieces and then they have these light green rhinestones, like give it a look under a black eye light and see if it fluoresces because it will add value to the items that you're selling. So this guy was $4 and a, another kind of unmarked beauty here, gold tone metal brooch here. Again, pretty sizable. I've been selling quite a bit of these. This guy does need a little bit of a bath. It's a little dusty. So I'll just go in and uh, the way that I clean vintage rhinestone jewelry is I'll take a Q-tip and I'll dip it in alcohol and alcohol is like a volatile substance, meaning it will dry very quickly. So you don't want to expose these vintage pieces to liquid. So wetness, water, don't soak them at all. Like don't soak them, um, you know. Uh, so watch out for those Sonicare kind of cleaners, those ones that vibrate like <laughs> high frequencies because you could make your prongs loose, um, you know, or it, again, long-term exposure to the metal is just not a good idea with a lot of these vintage pieces. So I'll take a Q-tip and I'll just clean all of this and it usually makes it sparkle really, really Really nicely and cleans it very well so I picked up that guy and that's beautiful as well I love my vintage um, my vintage rhinestone pieces again keeping in that in that tone in that theme I picked up this one this one's gorgeous and this one I was so excited to see you can see he was marked for $4.99 <laughs> so it was $2.50 and this one is actually by Regency you can see uh, the logo right there on one of the navettes, the back of the navette. Regency sells pretty decently. Uh, very beautiful, high quality costume jewelry. And you could just look at that. We have a gorgeous kind of Aurora Borealis coating on some of the rhinestones there. We have these fancy kind of art glass, beautiful art glass, swirl glass pieces here. Um, some beautiful marquees, beautiful rounds. I love that it is set in a darker toned metal. And uh, like I said, Regency does sell fairly well. If you're not familiar with this brand, 
uh, definitely go onto eBay and look up selling prices. They're selling for, you know, 100, 150, 200. They're highly, highly collectible, difficult to find, and also very, like I said, very well known for their high quality rhinestone pieces. So I love this. Anytime I just see any kind of rhinestone jewelry that looks high quality at the thrift store, I always ask to see it because I just never know what I'm going to find there. I've found so many um, interesting and amazing, amazing pieces, really old pieces. So it's always worth looking at uh, for, for me for that from that perspective because I just never know what I'm going to find. Uh, where do we go from there? Because there's so many pretties. Um, I don't know how you guys are doing. If you're resellers yourself, uh, if you are, I don't know if you've noticed that the 90s have come back. <laughs> <laughs> the 2000s have come rearing back and so uh, because of that I'm I don't know about y'all but I'm experiencing a lot of uh big bold like big bold jewelry sales uh, it is flying off of the shelf so people are looking for like a lot of those components that were synonymous with the style of the 80s and the 90s so again we're talking big bold I always make dynasty references Alexis Carrington Crystal Carrington <laughs> Dallas kind of, you know, or you think of the supermodels like the Alinda Evangelista, the early 90s, Naomi Campbell, the big bold jewels that they wore in Vogue magazine. And so uh, these were $2.99. Yes, okay. And they were half price. So I don't think these are marked. Let me see. No, they're not. They're not, but they're cool. I think they've got that very, like I get big bold, but also that brushed gold coloration, which is very popular, it was very popular in the 80s and early 90s. So I picked up those guys uh, just because like I like to pay attention to what's trending in terms of sales on eBay because it definitely ebbs and flows. Uh, you know, what's good one year is sometimes not good the next year. So uh, what often what I'll do is I'll go into generic sold categories. So I'll just look up vintage necklace as an example and I'll see what's selling and not selling for two dollars because obviously we don't want to make two dollars i want to you want to make as much profit kind of like as you can so i'll look at just categories generically like that to see which brands are selling which brands i should be paying attention to i look to see if i can identify trends so that that can inform what i need to be listing in my store and so that's basically how i approach it so again um it, another big bold kind of 80s 90s kind of looking necklace here this one was Half of $13, I think that's actually kind of expensive. I feel like that seems to be a bit more than what I usually pay for items at my thrift store. I don't know why they have this marked up. It is not marked, so it's an unmarked piece, but I think it's cool. I like the gold tone metal. I like, again, that it's big and bold. It has a nice fold over clasp. And it's a good statement. It's a good statement piece. It's a, I think the kind of almost beveled edges throughout the swirl design make it uh, very eye catching. So I did pick up that guy. And it's, uh, it's been a rainy, rainy day here today in New Orleans, but we have been enjoying pretty fabulous weather up until this point. So I'm not complaining. It's supposed to stop. And I think the sun looks like starting to peak out. So I'm not complaining too, too much. Um, I got this very cool gold tone snake wrap bracelet. Uh, and this dude, you could see here is kind of like a woven look here. He's got red rhinestone eyes and he was marked for $4.99. So it was $2.50. I'll also tell you when I go to the thrift store, I you know I wake up early and I try to be one of the first people in line because the jewelry folks are pretty voracious. <laughs> they throw down some elbows. I mean, not really, but you know, folks go straight to the jewelry counter, and so you try. I want to, but we're all looking for different things. There's a lot of people who are constantly looking for precious metals. I've noticed. So I see a lot of those usual folks, but I, I'm going for the costume jewelry. I'm always looking for high quality costume jewelry. And so uh, I think what a lot of people disregard or don't pay attention to is kind of like where I like to establish my niche and um, where I like to make bank. <laughs> so, you know, their loss our gain, folks. You know, that's how I look at it. So, yeah. He's just cool, and I like the motif of a snake. A lot of people like snake motif jewelry. It sells always very, very well. I thought he was fabulous. Uh, I like him a lot, and for $2.50, absolutely. So I picked up that little dude. Here's one that was, I think this was like the find of the day. I was so excited to find this. Um, something that people tend to overlook as well at the thrift store for some, for some reason, glass jewelry. And um, I don't know, I think people just see glass and they assume that it is like just costume junkie jewelry. 
please take a look at glass jewelry. Glass jewelry can be Lalique, it can be uh, Baccarat. You want to take a look at glass jewelry. This one caught my eye. This one was, oh my god, this was three dollars. So for three dollars, hold on, this was tags coming off. For three dollars, I asked to see this, and the woman showed it to me. And I can kind of, you can kind of tell that this is this is something high quality. It's beautiful. It almost has like a, a water droplet kind of look to it with the purple right there at the top. It has an iridescence to it. This to me is like really screaming high quality. And so 50% off $3. I want to see if you can maybe see what I was looking for basically or what I was able to see when I picked this up or what my thought process was here. Oh, there you go. It's, it's actually right there. Are we going to be able to focus? No, we are not because we're focused on all this pretty jewelry. I'm going to have to push it aside and we'll come back here. It's signed right there. I'm going to get closer. Get a little closer. Don't be shy. <laughs> there it is. It's signed Baccarat. So Baccarat is a fine crystal, you know, crystal manufacturer, mostly crystal vases, uh, crystal sculptures, uh, drinking glassware, uh, that type of thing. Um, it's, they also make fine jewelry. And so uh, when you look up Baccarat, they have glass, this is very, very typical of their style, these glass kind of rings. I have a Baccarat ring. I was very upset with it. It was this gorgeous green one that I, I really loved. And of course I dropped it and it, and it broke. So uh, that's the uh, <laughs> that's the potential downfall with glass jewelry. But I, I think this is truly spectacular. And something like this does sell kind of like for about $200 or so. So if I picked up this beautiful ring for $3. And again, I don't think, no, no one probably gave that a second look at the thrift store. I can guarantee it. It's probably been there for a little bit. And uh, I was thrilled to find that. It's super cool. I love that it's clear. Like I said, it just looks like an iridescent drop of water. So, so cool. I've found um, Baccarat occasionally here. I've picked it up at garage sales. I found one time a Baccarat cross, a glass cross in green. I, I found it at a uh, garage sale for a dollar. That was definitely a good pickup. <laughs> Um, okay. Like I said, because people just see glass, they assume it's costume jewelry, but glass can be, it's crystal. It's, it, it's spectacular. There are fine crystal and glass makers for sure. Uh, this one here was also $3 and this one's very recognizable. I'm sure if you see it, you know what this is. Uh, this is Heidi Douse. And so very typical here with our super glitzy, glammy, rhinestone, pave, uh, very typical. She likes to set in this kind of brass type of colored, um, you know, it's very collectible. People love Heidi Dows. And so uh, I don't think this is like a huge, huge money maker. I would maybe expect to get like, maybe like 35, 40 on this one, but you know, for three bucks, I think that's a good pickup. So I got a little Heidi Dows ring. Uh, where else? Let's stick with the rings. I also got this ring tag fell off. It was $14.99 and then half off of that. Um, so this one is just a really beautiful sterling silver and Larimar, beautiful Larimar center stone there, which is this kind of beautiful milky blue stone and a cabochon in the middle Larimar a Caribbean stone typically found in places like the Dominican Republic in fact if you go to places like the Dominican Republic or even Puerto Rico um, you know which is like right next door you'll find a lot of high-end jewelry stores stores selling Larimar jewelry it's uh it's pretty sought after and it's um it's pretty pricey and I like the look of this anytime I see Larimar jewelry my um, ears are going to perk up a little bit because, it, you know, it, like I said, it is an expensive stone. So if I see something, this one's surrounded with beautiful blue complimentary topaz. I love this. This is a really fabulous ring. I'll put it on for you there. Uh, you can see that there's a beautiful matrix in the Larimar, which is something you'll typically see. It's almost like a webbing similar to what you see with turquoise, but in that Caribbean blue color and so this one has London blue topaz and what looks like Swiss blue topaz surrounding it nice big bold stones we've got ovals we've got squares and we've got rounds and the clears to me look like uh, clear topaz so that would be my assumption there and this is 925 at a stamp sterling silver it also has a maker's mark on it I don't recognize the maker's mark it looks like a D in a square so I'll have to do a little bit more research on that but 
I love this. This is a great looking ring. So uh, $7.50 on that one. I think that was worth it. Very nice ring. What else? Um, here, these are fun and cute. And they had a whole bunch of them. And I kind of love them. And these were, these are like little cloisonne enamel dangle egg earrings. And so you can see here, these were each um, $2. $2? Yep, $2, and so I got a little red pair. I think these are just so adorable and very wearable, right? Like they're not huge. I've got another pair here and the two pairs of red. I think these will be just fast, fun sellers. One pair in a white with a beautiful blue enamel cloisonne there. Fun, right? I think these are so adorable. I might keep a pair for myself. I think these are just, to me, this is like the perfect, you know, these are not heavy. They're just a little, the right kind of amount of jazz, you know, a little jazzy um, to give you a really, and they're interesting and they're fun. So I got three pairs of those guys. Uh, I, like I said, I think those will be really fast, fun sellers. What else? Where should we go? Oh, this is fun. I've in the past have picked up this brand. Uh, this is a brand from the 1960s. It is called um, Karen Lynn and Karen Lynn uh, made... I want to say along the veins of like a almost like a Sarah Coventry but I think a higher quality gold plated look to it and I think this in fact is either gold plated or gold filled let me see here I have a bracelet by her that has ivory carved flat yeah gold okay this is 12 karat gold filled it says it on the tag uh, I have a, a bracelet of hers that's very beautiful and it has carved ivory flowers and I have kept that one for myself it came out of a jewelry bag of course because you can't resell ivory um but this one is just beautiful and i love that it has this kind of like almost bamboo motif with um either jadeite or nephrite i'm gonna have to test that and what i found with this karen lynn jewelry you can see here there's the tag right there this holds up spectacularly this is very well made jewelry if i showed you the other bracelet that i have it looks just like this it looks literally like it just came out of a jewelry box like last week it's so pretty. It's so well made. The hang tags are very high quality. Let's see. I'm going to show you next to, this would actually look very cute, next to my Mexican bracelet here. And you can see we have some oval cabochons. Um, just really beautiful. This one was uh, $5. I love it so much. This is just a really gorgeous, high quality, lovely vintage piece of jewelry. 12 karat gold filled. Again, the brand on this is Karen Lynn. It has a hang tag on it. Um, and she did make these types of, this type of kind of nephrite, jadeite, whatever this ends up being. Like I said, I do have to test it. Um, gold filled jewelry here and beautiful bamboo motif on that. I love that one a lot. So I picked up that guy. Um, today, my jewelry kind of having like a Mexican sterling silver jewelry moment. So I've been wearing a lot of my Mexican sterling silver pieces and that's what this one is here. This is a big panel bracelet and we have a green onyx or what we call like Mexican onyx. Uh, this was, these pieces were very typical of tourism items coming out of Mexico <clears throat> throughout the years. These are Aztec carved warrior faces, but uh, some of these like the quality will vary on them. Some of them are very, very nice and some of them are like a little bit lesser quality. I like this. I picked this up. This was out of a jewelry bag and it was missing the pin. So I went and I went ahead and had that fixed by my jeweler. Like the pin was like $2. So just needed a little pin replacement to put the panel back. So that's what I've got on today. Uh, I picked up these as well. These were $5. And again, these are just kind of like an Asian motif, likely um, a nephrite, a beautiful drop earring. And uh, they kind of go with this. Not quite. Uh, but I think these are really lovely as well. So I picked those up. Where should we put these? Next here. And uh, you know me, I love me some Native American jewelry. I don't have, you know, there's no shortage of it here in Louisiana. I always think that because, you know, we're next to Texas. Uh, there tends to be like quite a bit of crossover from people coming here and there and going back and forth. So I do tend to find a lot of Native American jewelry pieces. If you've watched my channel, you know this for a very long time. 
Um, this one is, what's the tag on this? Okay, so this was $20. I paid up a little bit on this one, but it was two pieces. And I don't think these pieces actually do, I mean, they go together, but I don't think they go together. Um, but they ended up sticking these together. It was originally $39.99. It was half price. And so here we just have a really beautiful petite point multi-stone sawtooth bezel Native American piece here and so this one's actually signed it's got a J-U on the back and it's a sterling and the U kind of looks like a horseshoe uh, but uh, this is a pendant and it's on the sterling silver chain so it was nice that that came with it and it just has really beautiful bits of turquoise gaspiite um, I forget what this purple stone is what is this purple stone might be purple spiny oyster I don't know. I need to look it up. I always forget the purple one. Um, we have spiny oyster. We have yellow or golden mother of pearl there. We have turquoise. And so this is really beautiful. And they stuck it with these. Um, and I do love these. I think they're really beautiful. They're also signed sterling on the back, but they don't have a maker's mark. The reason why I know these two don't go together is just because the way the stones are set. This has a sawtooth bezel, which is what literally looks like when you look at it. It looks like kind of a, you know, kind of edged bevel bezel on there kind of like a, a saw um, so and that's why I know that that and this doesn't go together but I think I'll take it <laughs> put them together I'll take it I, I think they're really pretty I, I love this type of jewelry I actually have a cuff as well that looks like this hmm, maybe I should have lotted these together uh, the cuff is currently for sale on eBay but I, I just this is very beautiful I think nice looking Native American or Southwestern style jewelry here with the multi gemstone look very very pretty I like that one a whole lot where else I am almost done here folks I have a couple of pieces left this was like random this was on the rack and uh, I, I do enjoy vintage glass beaded jewelry I love Czech glass beaded jewelry West German glass Everything coming out of Austria, Bohemia, all of those fabulous glass makers of the past. And this guy was just hanging on the rack and he was $2. And so I really, this to me is just like a, a ray of sunshine <laughs> that you can wear. This is like pure happiness on a chain. And I just love it. I think it's unique. I love the glass on there. I like these kind of like boomerang shaped glass beads there. I like that they're two-tone with the yellow they're like a milk glass, but with yellow and white. And in between there, we have these cute, I think those those beads, I think are plastic. Let me see here. Yeah, I think these are plastic, but the other ones are glass. Um, you know what you do if to tell what I typically do if you don't know this trick, if you don't know that something is glass or plastic, first of all, plastic will feel warm in your hand. It'll just feel like, you know, you're touching a spatula. <laughs> um, but a uh, glass will feel a little bit colder when you touch it or if you're still not 100% sure what you could just do is take the two beads very gently and just kind of you know do that and uh, the sound too will be a little bit do it gently because if it's glass obviously you don't want to break it but the sound will be an indicator to whether or not it's glass or plastic so I, I just love this vintage glass beaded necklace I feel like I'm seeing a little bit more of an interest in Czech glass beaded jewelry online. I'm, I've been selling quite a bit of it, so uh, there was a reason why I picked that one up as well. And like I said, it's just beautiful. I couldn't leave it behind, so uh, I, I definitely grabbed that. And um, I'm coming to a close here, folks. I did also want to mention this. I got this little sterling silver uh, faux opal ring here, and it's almost got like a little bit of a clover design to it. Let's focus up. Can we focus? Can we focus? Here we go. Uh, it's got, it's, you could see it's almost like a jelly faux opal and in a clover design. I just like the look of this. I thought it was very pretty. It's very delicate. It almost has a, a vintage, it looks like a, like a vintage revival piece. You can see here the way it's set in the back. It's very nicely set. It's a well-made little ring. Uh, so, you know, I like, it definitely gives me a little bit of an art deco vibe with the setting and, and the detail on the band. So this one was a cutie and this one was 15. It's really sweet. It looks cute on, doesn't it? It's so delicate. It's very feminine, I think. It even looks pretty next to like the big chunky like sterling silver ring because it's um, you know, it's like the antithesis. It's like a you know, we've got like a little delicate, pretty, almost like a white gold aesthetic to it, even though it's sterling silver next to something that's a little bit more chunky. Beautiful. I like this one a whole lot. So this little girl. 
Don't ask me why she's a girl. This is a girl, I think. <laughs> she came home with me as well. And so, yeah, you guys, that's everything. It was a really fun time thrifting. Uh, you know, we're getting back into warmer weather here. We're hoping, I'm hoping, you know, garage sales starting. The season's kind of like amping up again, which will be always a good time. But uh, I have my tried and true thrift store here. I always hit the thrift store first. It never fails to deliver. And so I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If if I'm wrong on any of these pieces, please let me know. I always appreciate the feedback and your knowledge share. It's a two-way street. It goes both ways. I love to share information with you, and I love it when you guys do the same. So thanks for tuning in. Give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope you all have a fabulous, fabulous weekend. I'll see you at the next video. Bye.